you know what's really interesting is that when I first started trading in the business in, in the in the in the mid nineteen eighties, no one used technical analysis. Everyone thought that it was hocus pocus. Um, I was actually one of the first. I was actually one of those first few traders that really relied almost entirely on the technical approach to trading. But what I used to actually explain to traders on the desk back then on Wall Street was that whether you you think that you don't believe in technical analysis, but what you're really relying on is, in fact, technical analysis. Because what they did was monitor order flow. So we basically were ticker tape watchers. We watched the prices of chart, the prices of stock transactions go by, and we monitored the size of those transactions and the velocity with which those transactions were going by. We also would monitor the rate of change. So the rate of change in terms of size, the rate of change in terms of velocity. And it's those techniques of watching the order flow go by a ticker tape to monitor those changes. Well, what we were initially, what we essentially were doing, were monitoring the, we were monitoring the individual transactions that would make up a technical bar on a chart. So instead of collecting all of those transactions and viewing them all condensed into a single bar, we were actually monitoring every single one of the transactions that would create a bar. So by so it was de, it was still a de facto technical approach to the markets. And this is what I would try to explain to many of the old timers on the trading desk back then, that you're a technician. You think you're not, but you're a technician. You're monitoring the technical part of the game, the transactions. And a lot of people don't understand the difference between a fundamental approach to the markets and a technical approach. I always believed in the technical approach because my definition of technical trading is the reliance on what is happening now. Do you understand this? The technicals point to the now. It does not project the future, but it does utilize the past to help you read what is happening now. You can use the combination of the past to help you determine what is happening now to help you come up with a statistical model of what is likely to happen in the very near future from this now. This is technical analysis. Fundamental analysis uses past data regarding a company, right? With the idea that the past data should reflect in what should happen in the future. I believe that's actually more hocus pocus than the technical and te the technical approach. There are many people in the game still today that believe that technical analysis is smoke and mirrors. They believe that looking at the markets from a technical point of view, they, they say drawing lines on a chart and moving averages don't really reveal anything. And that could not be further from the truth. I think that what's closer to the truth is that looking at a snapshot of a company three to six months in the past and taking that data, which is now old, and saying, that because this company earned this and did this seven months ago, the price should go here. I think that's more hocus pocus than saying, for instance, the last time Tesla tested $600, it exploded to $1,200. It doubled in price. So that the next time Tesla comes near $600, there should be some area of support. Why? Because traders were rewarded at $600. And we are repetitive animals, no matter whether we like that or not. And wherever, whatever we get rewarded from, $600, we will tend to repeat. So a repeat buying or going into Tesla at $600 is a high likelihood because that act in the past rewarded traders. That to me has greater reliability than saying, well, you know, this company uh, earned this uh, over the last three months, um, and we project from that earnings that the price should be this. I think that's more hocus pocus than technical analysis. But anyway, guys, what a great opening. Guys, um, my approach to the market has predominantly been technical. 
all the way back from the days where the vast majority of people did not believe in technical analysis. I'm actually partly responsible for the street and for this industry relying on technical analysis in, the, in a big way because I became one of the biggest voices in this industry in the early to mid 1990s going into the 2000s before I sort of semi-retired. I was on every financial show all the time that you can possibly fathom. I was on CNBC regularly before CNBC was CNBC, when it was FNN Network, which became CNBC. I had one of the largest, most respected financial trading firms in the industry. I had over 88,000 institutional subscribers to my services my analysis about stocks in the individual market. I had trading offices all over the world, Japan, Germany, uh, London. I had trading offices throughout the United States. I even had a trading office in Caracas, Venezuela, all the way back in the late 1990s, 2000, where we were the vast majority of the volume on the Venezuelan stock exchange. Um, and so during this particular time, my approach was technical, which was so um, anathema to what the vast majority of other traders relied on. And because of the popularity of my firm, because of the popularity of what we were doing throughout the world, right? because of the popularity of my first book that came on the market, because the industry chose me to be the spokesman for the trading industry all the way back in the 90s, because Barron's ranked me and my firm the number one source to go to for institutions and high-level individuals who wanted to learn how to play the market successfully and professionally, because Barron's ranked me number one in the United States, because Dow Jones Industrial Average named, dubbed me the Messiah of trading all the way back in 1998, I mean, 1999, because of these things, the popularity of my approach to the market, like swing trading from a technical perspective and day trading from a technical perspective, actually proliferated. Now, I'm not saying I'm the only one who helped to contribute to that, but I am definitely one of the major ones. So I tell you this to say this, guys, when you're when, when we are together and we're talking about things, when I'm showing you things or teaching you things or we're discovering things together, these things that I'm sharing with you, they're not coming from a third party. This knowledge that I share with you is not coming to you because I've taken a seminar somewhere or I've read someone else's book or I was the mentor of someone else. This came from 38 years of living in the markets every single day of my life, nearly four decades long. Losing, winning, going through major ups, major downs, and surviving, right? My pedigree is very rare in this space. It's very rare to find someone with nearly 40 years of trading experience and document it. You can go back and look this up. Document it. Um, that still in this business, all right? So there you are. That is why I wanna be your trader for life. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for recognizing that, guys, and thank you for your support. I love the comments that I see persistently on the videos. Um, I love the fact that many of you are starting to like the videos. There's, you, I want you to understand that this content takes a lot of time to put out for you on these channels in three different languages. Um, it takes a lot of effort. There's obviously cost associated with it. The way you pay me back is to like the video. And even if it's just a comment, great video, loved it, Oliver, or hated it, whatever the comment is, the comments help, the likes help. And whenever you don't like something, hit the, like, hit the dislike button. That helps too. All engagement helps, okay? So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so we have nearly 250,000 subscribers just on the english channel one of the fastest growing um technically oriented trading educational sites on or pages or channels on youtube today uh and i am hoping to continue my dream of basically leaving a legacy behind me of proper 
knowledge and information to give those who were just like me all the way back in the beginning of the 1980s who want to start this game but don't have the resources to really start at a very high level. All right. And so I want this channel to be a place where everyone can come and start and get some sound information, some sound techniques, some sound knowledge, a sound foundation under their belt, and not have to basically go into this game blind as I was forced to do.